Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early, daily discipline. Mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. Let's talk about never giving up. Tell a little story about not giving up. You know, suicide's a weird thing. How does one get to a point where they decide that maybe my life isn't worth it? Maybe it's not worth going on. Maybe I'll just check out here. And, and we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you don't know if you're going to go to hell. You don't know what it is. Just blackness, darkness. We think of an afterlife and have all these fantasies. Oh, it's going to be better than this. Anything's better than this. How do you know? What if it's way worse? But nonetheless, suicide is something that happens every single day in this town. I know the guy who picks up the bodies. He works for the city. And he drives the bodies to the morgue. He tells me that he picks up 15 suicides every day in this town. I live in a small town. 15 every day, seven days a week. I think the statistic, I'm pretty sure, I, I forget what it is. It was something like 50%, one out of two returning veterans commit suicide. I've had 10 friends, around 10 friends who've killed themselves. I didn't know anyone who killed themselves when I was in my 20s and 30s, none. And I knew lots of people that suffered. Nobody killed themselves. Other people got, uh, killed them. I, I went through about 20 murders. All my friends. But as soon as I turned 40, I started going through suicides. It was all suicides. Even my own girlfriend committed suicide. A good buddy of mine committed suicide that, that next year. It was just bam, bam, bam. Everybody started killing themselves. I've never been that type, but I have been down that road once. I'll tell you about it. I got saved. Saved by God. I used to be a pretty fucked up guy. And I kind of think somehow, I don't know why, but God likes me. I don't know why. I didn't seem to do much to be likable. And I'm being serious when I say this. God tried to save me a couple times and I brushed that shit off. Get away from me. I don't need your help. Fuck off. But this time it worked for some reason. This time I was saved, and it changed my life. I have other stories on here when there was an attempt made by angels. Oh, I tell the story on here, I have the video, go check it out, of when 12 guys, big, giant, ex-gang members, came to save me as I was on the block. They were in some Bible outreach thing. That's a kind of a funny story. You can go find that video. That didn't work. That might have worked for some of you. Be the craziest shit that ever happened to you. For me, I was just like, fuck all you motherfuckers. <laughs> I ain't going to church. I ain't reading no stupid Bible. I'm not going to change my life for you or for nobody. But this time it worked. So it was my birthday. I was 30. I was sitting in my apartment, me and my brother are renting an apartment in Culver City. Culver City's cool. I liked Culver City for the most part. I didn't like my apartment or my shithead landlord or my stupid neighbors. <laughs> but other than that, it was cool. It's not a bad town. And I was alone and I was feeling depressed. I kind of had hit a brick wall with my life and turning 30 really hit me hard. And I realized that everybody else I knew, not everyone, but a lot of my friends seemed like they were moving forward and I had nothing. Friends of mine were getting married. I had just been dumped by a girl. Friends of mine are having kids. Friends of mine are buying houses. I'm still living with my brother in a shitty apartment in the ghetto in the barrio, still gangbanging, still witnessing murders. I had just witnessed a drive-by on my walk to the liquor store 
like a week earlier, had to jump out of the way. A war between the, the, the Culver City boys and the, and the Inglewood bloods. Mexicans versus blacks. Watch the guy's chest explode. Watch two other guys drag him into the Denny's that they were parked out in front of. Saw the car drive off. The shooters saw him drive off. I'm right there, only man on the street, nobody else but me. So I'm coming off of experiences like that all the time, all the time. All the time shit's like that's happening to me. Amongst a whole host of other things, I could go on and on painting the picture of how fucking depressed and lame life was for me, but you get it. And I sat there in my apartment with a Bible on the table and a pistol. A Lorsen 9mm, 14 shot, piece of shit. I bought it brand new from Outdoor World, $109. Piece of shit. Never jammed, jammed once though, but those Lorsens, ugh, never buy one. The worst gun ever. The only thing they're good for is throwing it in the river. Tie it to a brick and throw it in the river. That's what you do. Go buy it from the store, tie it to a brick and throw it in the river. <laughs> Don't even fuck with it. Piece of shit. I had that sitting on the table staring at me. I'm looking at both, the Bible and the gun. The Bible or the bullet. Then I think about suicide and I thought about it pretty extensively and what it would be like and how it might be a release for me, but what would happen to my dog, I had a dog, and what would happen to my brother, I felt kind of responsible for him at that point. He's doing real well now, but then I kind of felt like I, I was very much in that big brother role, let's put it that way. I think he would have gone homeless without me. So I was wondering what would I, what would that, my decision, what would that do to him? And then my mother, what would it do to her? Would she slip into a depression? Would it ruin her life? How many lives would I ruin because of my weakness? So I'm thinking about that, looking at that pistol loaded, always cocked and locked, ready to rock and roll. You have a gun with no bullets in it, you're an idiot. Oh, let me get my magazine and put it in. You see these videos of guys practicing how fast they can put the magazine in. Fucking idiot. You have that shit ready to rock and roll. All the time. But I didn't pick up the gun. I picked up the Bible. For some weird reason. I don't even know why I had it on the table. I'm not like a big time Christian and I wasn't going to church. I think it was my brother's Bible. I don't even know where he got it from because he wasn't a Christian or Bible thumper either. We had this book and it was sitting on the table for some weird reason. So I pick it up, open it up to a random page and it opened up to the book of Luke. And there's a story in the book of Luke in the beginning where it's a parable of the lost sheep. And Jesus talks about losing his sheep he tells the story of when you lose one of your sheep, when one of your sheep runs away, gets lost. You leave the pack of 99 to go find the one. And you go through whatever is necessary, over mountains, through bushes, into valleys, whatever it's necessary to find that one lost sheep. And then when you find it, you don't beat it, you don't scold it, you don't grab it by the ear and say, never again, you little bastard. No, you rejoice. And you carry it back. So that kind of changed my vibe a little bit, a little bit when I read that and I was just like, whoa just tripping out a little bit on that because I just opened the book to a random page and hit on that and was just like, man, the lost sheep. I'm the lost sheep. Wow. But it's just a book, man. It's just a book. So I realized, hey, I need to get the fuck out of this apartment. <laughs> I just need to get uh, some fresh air or something. So I went on a walk and I'm not the type of guy to go for walks, you know? Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a stroll. Who the hell does that? Especially in L.A. Nobody walks in L.A. <laughs> Except for I did. I went for a little walk in L.A. You don't see anybody walking in L.A. There's nobody on the sidewalks other than bums. Nobody's just walking around. Maybe in New York you guys do that. Not in L.A. People drive in L.A. 24-hour traffic. 
There's even that song. Well, who sang that song? She had a cute voice, too. Nobody Walks in L.A. I used to like that song. They played that shit on the radio all the time. So I'm going for a walk, Culver City, in the barrio. I found myself walking across that bridge, the Terminator Bridge, where they, it's a, it, it goes over just an empty, barren, concrete river. It's the L.A. River. There's no water in it. A bunch of graffiti on the sides. And... Uh, that river, I don't know if that's the exact location, but that river is where they filmed the Terminator movie with John Connor, you know, the little kid, and you get on the motorcycle and they're riding through, you know that scene, maybe you don't. But I'm walking across that bridge, and right on the other side of it is a library, Culver City Library, a little tiny library. I don't know if it's still there. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know if people go to libraries anymore. And I walk by the library and they're having a little book sale. And in, amongst all the crappy books, because the library book sale is usually crappy books, old dusty old books nobody wants, there was a box of pictures. And we had just moved down to Culver City. It hadn't been there for that long, so I was looking for pictures from my walls. And I'm flipping through the box. I pick up a picture. And as I'm looking at it, the old lady running the book sale says, that picture is free for you. You need to have that picture. It was a picture, it was this picture, of Jesus carrying the lost sheep. And it really tripped me out when I saw this because I just got done reading this section of Luke in the Bible. And I felt like, man, if that ain't a weird quinky dink, I don't know what is. And I walked home, I went right home, feeling different, feeling kind of better, kind of forgetting about how much of a loser I was. And I stared at this picture the whole ride home. Would have been an easy way to shoot me because I wasn't paying attention. I used to walk around highly aware of enemies. Not this time, I just walked home staring at this picture. That was, geez, the year 2000. It's been 24 years I've had this picture. Suicide's never worth it. Everything is temporary. You'll get through whatever is haunting you. You may be that lost sheep wandering through the valley of the shadow of death. I was. But all you have to do is just kind of have an open mind. Stay open-minded. Pay attention to the signs and signals sent your way. Because one of them might be from God. Food for thought.